नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ व्हाट डज दिस डेटा से आई एम अजय प्रकाश देर आर वाइड स्प्रेड एलिगेशन अगेंस्ट द भारतीय जनता पार्टी गवर्नमेंट दैट इट वर्क ओनली फॉर द वेरी रिच पीपल इन फैक्ट दी कांग्रेस वेंट आउट एंड इवन कॉल देम ए सूट बूट की सरकार नाउ देर इज अनदर परसेप्शन दैट इन दी हिंदी बेल्ट वेर एवर द बीजेपी डज वेल दी सपोर्ट इज वाइड स्प्रेड and in fact that is true when it comes to the parliamentary elections they do exceedingly well but then again the bjp actually does not do so well when it comes to the state legislative elections when it comes to election results analysis we often see many types of analysis that includes party wise it includes region wise and then people extend this analysis to even caste wise though the election commission doesn't provide the data of caste wise results now for a party like the bhartiya janata party which has such a wide spread support in many of the state the question therefore is does that entire state vote in a uniform pattern i mean that the people living in the larger cities the state capitals the smaller cities as well as in the villages do they all have a similar view about that party now for doing the data analysis for this episode i have selected the state of uttar pradesh the reason is very simple that's the state where the bhartiya janata party has the strongest base and i will also do this uh, analysis later for other states probably definitely i'll do it for karnataka as well now what i want to do is i want to see the voting pattern of the people staying in the large cities the state capital versus the pattern which they show in the smaller cities and the rural areas after seeing this analysis i was a bit surprised and i am sure you too will be surprised the reason is very simple there is a wide spread perception and we all believe that bjp is very strong in uttar pradesh and that all the people in the up have supported the party really very strongly and once you look at the data you will realize that this perception is not really true and therefore the title of my episode that will the indian villages be the change in 2024 stems from this analysis so watch this episode till the end for some very surprising results now before i go forward the usual request and the reminder if you like this program please subscribe to my channel and if you like the episode do share it among your friends for uttar pradesh i am going to analyze the results of the parliament election of 2019 so i have taken data for the parliamentary constituencies now how i have classified this data is that there are two tier 1 cities in up lucknow and kanpur then there is one metro this i have taken uh, noida or gautam budh nagar to be a part of the ncr or the delhi region therefore i have classified this as a metro and in the tier 2 cities i have five cities gaziabad agra alabad gorakhpur and varanasi the remaining 72 constituencies are from the smaller cities and the rural areas of uttar pradesh the voter turnout in gautam budh nagar had crossed 60% it was 60.49 followed by the tier 2 cities where the voting voter turnout was 56.79% and the least voter turnout was in the tier 1 lucknow and kanpur only 53.34% and in the other remaining cities and the rural areas the voter turnout was very close to 60 it was 59.59% so the first observation is that people away from the state capital or the tier 1 cities came out to vote much more than those who were residing in the city in fact kanpur had in among the cities kanpur had the least voter turnout of around 51% now for the 2019 general election for uttar pradesh i am going to uh, fill up this table 
as you may recollect there are 80 seats in uh, up 62 were won by bjp 5 by samajwadi party 10 by bsp congress got one and others two the average voter turnout in that election in up was 59.27% and then if you take the win margin for all the 80 candidates and work out their average it was 14.83% now the second observation is that for a state like uttar pradesh an average win margin of just 14.83% over the 80 candidates where bjp is supposed to be very strong doesn't appear to be a great margin a swing of around 7% can change the results completely now this low margin also means that there would have been several constituencies where the election would have been a very close race now you look at the figures uh, city wise or tier wise in tier 1 there the average win margin was 24.8% in tier 2 it goes up to 28.56% and in the metro the only one city noida it was 24.19% and in all the other 72 constituencies all put together the average win margin came down drastically it was only 13.47% 90% of the seats are in the others category and only 10% are in tier 1 tier 2 and the metro that is 72 seats are in the other category and 8 seats in the cities and the metros now looking at this data from the perspective of the bharatiya janata party the third point to note is that the bjp did fairly well in the tier 1 tier 2 cities whereas in the rural areas it was a very close fight for its candidates the win margins were nowhere near the so called prachand bahumat which amit shah ji would like you to believe so does up remain a invincible fortress for the bharatiya janata party well not really a 5 to 6% swing in the rural and the smaller town can make the results totally different and that's why i say the opportunity for the opposition in uttar pradesh lies in the rural areas and the smaller cities where if they work hard they can definitely make a huge dent let's analyze the win margins in the smaller cities in detail the very low margin i define as that of up to 5% and between 5 and 20% is the low margin wins and beyond 20% it becomes a relatively stronger win so in the 72 cities you will find that 16 constituencies were such that the margin was less than 5% and there were another 38 seats where the margin was between 5 and 20% In these 72 seats BJP had 154 seats with an average win margin of 13.9%. BSP had 110 seats with a lower win margin at 10.7%. SP 5 seats with an average win margin of 13.5. Congress had won only one seat at a win margin of 17.4 and Apna Dal won two seats with an average margin of 13.2%. So across the board for all parties there is not much of a difference in the win margins except that BSP probably did a little worse than the other party. If you will further analyze the win margins of the Bharatiya Janata Party in the smaller cities and the rural areas you will notice that the win margin of bjp was not all that strong at all in fact the party had not done well in this segment it had won only 15 seats with a margin of 25% or higher it had won 14 seats out of 54 with a very low margin that is only up to 5% and it had won 25 seats with a margin between 5 and 20% BSP's performance was not that great either 
it followed the bjp it had one nine seats out of 10 with a margin of less than 20 percent and only sp though it had won only five seats but it appeared that it had won it with a stronger margin so this is the parliamentary results 2019 map which we all, are all shown and it's available on wikipedia as well which shows that there's orange color all over the state and the BJP had a fantastic win in the state. Of course, the BJP had won 62 seats out of those 80. Five went to the SP, as I said, and 10 to the BSP. Two went to the Apnadal, which is in this region here. Now, what this map doesn't show is the strength of that win. And that's what I have shown you today. I'll try to show you, show that result on a map as well. Now across the state, if you take the seats where the win margin was less than 5%, these are the seats which come out. And you'll see much more orange in this area than any other. Of course, BSP is second with around four seats which are less than 5%. SP has, I think, one seat. The remaining all of them are with the BJP. And I've plotted the same map with the seats where the margin was less than 10%. So in this category of less than 10%, almost half the state appears to have been covered. Of course, BJP has the largest share because it had won the maximum number of seats, then followed by the BSP. So in the last parliamentary election of 2019 in Uttar Pradesh, the people from the rural areas and the smaller towns did not follow the same pattern as the people residing in the tier 1 and tier 2 towns. Now this means that there is no certainty that in the coming election in 2014, things will be any more different. And that gives an opportunity to the opposition parties of the BJP that if they work hard, they can turn around the results in their favor. So thank you for watching this episode. I'll see you again next week with some more interesting data. Till then, Namaskar and goodbye.